we are in the midst of what seems like we live now in a perpetual state of crisis. We have a health crisis, a pandemic sweeping the world and the country. The rest of the world is quarantining the United States, the richest country in the world. How ridiculous is that? We have about 25% of the cases and about 25% of the deaths with only 4% of the population. And why is that? It's because when members of Congress and the White House and the intelligence agencies found out that the pandemic was a serious threat, as far back as November, the intelligence agencies, White House briefings in January, congressional meetings in January and February. And what did members of Congress do? What did our government do? Did they act to prevent it? No. What they did instead is that members of Congress went and they bet on the stock market, on stocks of things like digital meeting technologies. They invested themselves in the catastrophe. They invested themselves in the pandemic being as horrible as it is. They made money off of it. And not one of them has faced consequences, serious consequences. And then what happened? And then after our, gov our government failed to actually prepare for the pandemic, it faced obviously a shortage of masks, personal protective equipment, ventilators. And so what did the government do? It lied to us. It had Dr. Fauci and its other spokespeople and both parties lied to us about the effectiveness of masks while other countries knew and were using masks, the countries that had handled it the best like South Korea were using masks they told us not to wear them. It took them weeks to reverse their advice. Tens of thousands of people are dead because they told us not to wear masks because they wanted to save them for health professionals. That is a scandal of enormous proportion. It is one of the greatest scandals in our country, certainly one of the greatest health scandals in our country's history because they weren't prepared because they went and they bet on the stock market first instead. What happened after that? They passed the CARES Act, a multi-trillion dollar Wall Street bailout. They just made it up as Ice, as Ice Cube recently put it in a video that he filmed saying, why should we vote Democrat? Or what are they gonna give us? What are they gonna give us after we vote Trump out? What are we gonna get that? How are we gonna improve our lives? They passed the CARES Act. They took that money. They basically made it out of thin air and they gave it to all their Wall Street friends. And then they created a small business program that was supposed to spare us from a small business apocalypse, which happened anyway. About 40% of small businesses are expected to go out of business in the United States. The biggest wave of corporate consolidation in our nation's history. And even that those small business loans got vacuumed up by big chains. Just like the checks, the stimulus checks, the $1,200 first round of stimulus checks that they sent, that was taken up. That debt collectors were allowed to take that money. And so even the things which were superficially supposed to be bailouts for the people, even the crumbs they threw us were things that they could vacuum up. How insulting is that? And they told people, they told small businesses, the big retailers are going to get to stay open, but you have to close. And somehow you have to continue affording your lease. And they told working people, you know what? You're not going to be able to work. You're not going to have a job. But somehow, and we're not going to pay you a basic income. We're not going to pay you, we're not going to pay you anything. We're not going to give you health care, free health care, like the rest of the world enjoys in facing this crisis, the rest of the developed world. But we're, somehow we expect you to survive. You know what? 80% of you were living paycheck to paycheck before this crisis, and we expect you to survive. You know, just figure it out, right? That's not what they told Wall Street. And you know why they haven't passed another, another bailout? You know, they went on vacation. They went on vacation instead of passing another bailout and one for the people. It's because Wall Street doesn't have enough things they want yet because the stock market is soaring now because billionaire wealth has increased by more than $600 billion during the pandemic. While the economy has contracted by about a third. 
That's why we only get things when Wall Street wants it. It doesn't matter how much the people are suffering. And it's reached levels that I did not think I would see in my lifetime in the United States. We have now one out of every 10 Americans that faces eviction, that faces being thrown out in the streets in the middle of a pandemic, one out of every 10. One out of every three families with children can no longer afford food. This is a failed state. The richest country in the world, a failed state. It cannot provide basic services. The definition of a failed state is a country, a government that becomes incapable of providing for its citizens on a fundamental level, meeting basic human needs. Because of these two corrupt parties, we are now in the throes of a health crisis, a racial justice crisis, after the murders of George Floyd, the paralyzing of Jacob Blake, the murder of Breonna Taylor, when will it end? We've seen an uprising in this country, an uprising of millions of people. New York Times described the Black Lives Matter movement as the biggest movement in the country's history. Not a word. It didn't budge Congress. In fact, congressional staffers were interviewed afterwards by Politico and they were asked, is this movement of millions of people, is that going to change policy in Washington? Are there policy plans? You know what they said? No, there are no plans. They, some of them even laughed when the reporters asked. That's the level of callousness we face now in our government. We face an economic crisis racial justice crisis, a health crisis, a planetary crisis. The, the Western half of the United States is engulfed in wildfires. If we don't fight now, there will be nothing left to fight for. We have to make our stand. That's why everybody has gathered today to form a people's party. We can do this. In Mexico, in 2014, progressives got tired of trying to reform their two neoliberal parties. You know what they did? They formed a new party. It was a movement for two years from 2012, and in 2014, it became a new party, Morena. Four years later, in just two years ago, four years later in 2018, they elected Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador, described as the Bernie Sanders of Mexico as their president. Just recently, he announced he's legalizing marijuana on top of a whole suite of progressive policies. They took both houses to the national legislature. They took the majority of the governorships and they took the presidency in four years. That's a political revolution. That's what a political revolution looks like. That's the level of system change that we need in this country. That's what we need to bring. The same thing has happened abroad in other countries. In country after country, particularly Latin America and Europe, we are seeing new parties rise and throw out and replace and seriously contest parties that have been dominant since the end of the Second World War. In Spain, Podemos. In Greece, Syriza. In Chile, the country of my parents' birthplace as a first-generation American, Frente Amplio. This is a phenomenon that is sweeping the world. And here in the United States, we need to catch that wave. We cannot be left behind. We have a responsibility, not just to ourselves, but to the rest of the country. We have such an outsized impact on the rest of the country. We impose our, on the rest of the world. We impose our will on the rest of the world. We took over from the United Kingdom, from Britain, as the world's global empire after the Second World War. We inherited that role. As for the corporate parties that we have, Bernie Sanders taught us that you could, there is no such thing as a candidate or a party a people's candidate or a people's party that takes corporate money. 
It's an oxymoron. You cannot serve the Wall Street oligarchs and Wall Street and corporations and the military industrial complex and the prison industrial complex and big oil and big ag and the people. Only by being supported by millions of small dollar donors like the Bernie Sanders campaign can a party be truly independent, can a party truly represent its people. And that is the ideal to which the movement for a people's party has committed itself. And that is the ideal to which we strive to form the people's party. We can do it. We have advantages that we have never had before as working people. We have the internet. The internet is powering new parties around the world, the ones I spoke of. The fundraising model is small dollar crowdsourced donations. We can do the same, just like Bernie Sanders campaign. We can do the same through small dollar recurring membership donations and membership, paid membership here in the United States. The organizing model of the Bernie Sanders campaign was likewise a model for a new party. It was a distributed organizing program functioning through apps, social media organizing, Facebook groups. We can do likewise. We are doing likewise right now. As much as they don't want our message to get out, as much as they've tried to clamp down on social media and independent news, so many of the hosts that you've heard from today who get the, who, who get the news out despite trying to be stamped out by YouTube, big corporations, they cannot contain our message. We went number two trending today on Twitter. The same thing is true of us being able to get the word out. We can, as I mentioned, circumvent the mainstream media now because we have the internet, because we can communicate peer to peer. We have the ability to get the message across. We're no longer forced to funnel the information that we get from the mainstream media and whatever sources they choose to put in front of us. We now can communicate with each other in a beautiful movement where the people lead what is worth knowing. We're going backwards. Everybody can see it. Everybody knows it. Things are getting worse. They're getting worse with the Democrats and Republicans. Their management of this country is taking us backwards. It is making things worse. In, 20, in 2008, I volunteered for Barack Obama. I worked my heart out for him. I even worked to try to enact cap and trade, like I mentioned earlier, to address the climate crisis, even though there were already at the time, there were climate scientists that were saying that's not the optimal solution. We need a carbon tax and we need many other policies that go further. That was the case 12 years ago. But at least he promised them, at least he said them, if that means anything more, rhetorically. Rhetorically, he understood that at least those things should be said. This is what people wanna say. The system now, the Democratic Party, both parties have seized up to such a degree where now we get candidates in the supposed left-wing party of the United States that cannot even promise those things anymore. They cannot even promise things that have 70, 80, 90% popular support among all Americans, like getting money out of politics, tackling the climate crisis, Medicare for all, free public college, ending mass incarceration, legalizing marijuana. Joe Biden is not an aberration. Trump is not an aberration. They are the natural consequence of this system's decline and capture by Wall Street and big money. Joe Biden himself told us that nothing will fundamentally change in his administration. He recently had a surrogate of his recently said that in fact, after, after they win, if they do, because they might lose to Trump as a result of how bad they are, 
But if they win, they will, there will be a return to austerity politics. They said the, the, the kitchen cabinet would be empty. They would have no resources for the people. There's never resources for the people. There's always resources for endless war. You just put that on the national credit card. You just invent the money. And there's never resources for the people. He recently met too with a CEO from Blackstone and held a fundraising teleconference with a number of his big donors. And he told them that there needs to be change in corporate governance in the United States. And he said, but it won't take any policies. I'm not proposing any. No policies. He has told us in as many different ways as he can that he is going to be a continuation of the neoliberal, neo-fascist decline of this country, which has now become a sprint. It's now become a free fall to authoritarianism and oligarchy. And the rest of the world is paying the price with us. We have a responsibility, a solemn responsibility to make good on this wave that is sweeping the world this revolution that is sweeping the world and to join our sisters and brothers in forming a major new political party that is free of corporate money and influence. Four years from now, I believe that we will be at the People's Convention of 2024 with a presidential candidate poised to win to defeat both parties like Morena did, both corporate funded parties and candidates at all levels to lead the political revolution that we all sought from the beginning. That is our vision. And it is a vision that has never been more real and more necessary than it is today. Thank you. I look forward to the next four years.